Let's take a look at Canada's new fighter competition between the Super Hornet, Gripen, and F-35. In order to replace its aging CF-188s or Legacy Hornets, Canada has put forth a request to acquire 88 new fighter aircraft by 2022, with a projected cost of $19 billion, along with a strong consideration for some of the aircraft to be built locally in Canada. In response, three manufacturers have offered their fighter as a suitable replacement. The Boeing FA-18 Super Hornet, the Saab Gripen, and the Lockheed Martin F-35. Today, we will take an in-depth look at each fighter and then look at the specific needs for the Royal Canadian Air Force. Let's start with the Super Hornet. The Super Hornet is a multi-role twin-engine supersonic carrier-capable fighter and attack aircraft. Notable features include twin tails, folding wings, a tail section that has vertical stabilizers forward of the elevators, a unique extended wing design known as Leading Edge Extensions or LEX, reinforced landing gear for carrier operations and wingtip missile racks. Super Hornets today are used as fleet defenders, air superiority fighters, long-range strike aircraft with precision guided weapons, fighter escort, suppression of enemy air defenses, close air support, maritime strike, reconnaissance, forward air control, and even tanker missions. Essentially, the Super Hornet is capable of performing every mission type in the tactical spectrum, making it the embodiment of a multi-role fighter. Let's take a look at some specifications for the Super Hornet. Length, 18.31 meters. Height, 4.88 meters. Wingspan, 13.62 meters. Maximum speed, Mach 1.8. Empty weight, 14,552 kilograms. Maximum takeoff weight, 29,937 kilograms. Engines, each General Electric F414 GE400 turbofan, 62.3 kilonewtons thrust dry or 97.9 kilonewtons thrust with afterburner. Thrust to weight ratio, 0.93 or 1.1 with loaded weight and 50% internal fuel. The Super Hornet has an incredible array of weapons it can carry, starting with the internal 20mm M61 Vulcan Cannon, along with 11 total hardpoints. Some of the weapon options for these hardpoints are as follows. For air-to-air -air missions, the AIM-9 Sidewinder and the AIM-120 AMRAM. For anti-ship operations, the Harpoon and SLAM ER. For air-to-ground missions, the Maverick, the AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon. Paveway laser guided bombs and freefall bombs. For suppression of enemy air defenses or seed, the harm missile. This list is by no means exclusive and should serve to demonstrate that if there is an airborne munition in the inventory, the Super Hornet can carry it. Canada is currently considering the Block 3 Super Hornet, which adds the following upgrades from existing Super Hornets an upgraded mission computer that is 17 times more powerful known as the Distributed Targeting Processor Network, or DTPN, mission computer. Feeding battlefield information into the DTPN is a Tactical Targeting Network Technology, or TTNT, data link. The TTNT data link allows for more communications among other allied ships and aircraft, which further enhances the Super Hornet's battlefield awareness. Additionally, the Block 3 Super Hornets can mount a centerline tank-mounted IRST, or Infrared Search Track System. The IRST allows for passive detection of stealthy aircraft like the Chinese J-20 and Russian Su-57. In fact, the IRST has been called a stealth equalizer with detection ranges well over 100 miles. To allow the pilot to access all this information, the Block 3 Super Hornet makes use of ACS or Advanced Cockpit System. The ACS takes former multiple MFD displays and combines them into one touchscreen display. The singular display brings an iPad-like user interface to the cockpit and is planned for use in both the single-seat E models and dual-seat F models. This will allow for customizable representations of critical data as it becomes available. Furthermore, the Block 3 Super Hornet also incorporates some structural improvements to extend its range. Conformal fuel tanks, or CFTs, are used to add an additional 3,500 pounds of fuel, which will not only help extend range but also increase loiter or patrol times over areas. Along with the CFTs, upgrades include coatings of stealth-enhancing materials 
and structural enhancements that will reduce the radar cross-section or RCS. A reduction in detectability should allow for the Super Hornet to better survive and thrive in the modern battlefield with ever-increasing peer-level threats. And lastly, structural changes have been incorporated to give the Block 3 Super Hornet an incredible planned service life of 10,000 hours. This will allow the Super Hornets to operate for decades to come. The Super Hornet appears to be a good fit for the RCAF, especially when one considers that Canada is the largest operator of legacy Hornets outside of the US. And while the Super Hornet is a vastly improved version of the Hornet, there are some similarities that should make the transition easier for pilots and maintainers. Next, let's take a look at the Gripen. The Saab JAS-39 Gripen is a Mach 2 single-engine light multi-role fighter which implements fly-by-wire controls and makes use of a relaxed stability design for improved maneuverability. Notable features include a delta wing, forward canards, a single engine, and side air intakes. Manufactured by Saab, a Swedish aerospace company, the Gripen was designed to replace the Draken and the Viggen, both successful previous Saab designs. The Gripen is designed to be easy to maintain and have a quick turnaround time between missions. Let's take a look at some specifications for the Saab Gripen. Length, 15.2 meters. Height, 4.5 meters. Wingspan, 8.6 meters. Maximum speed, Mach 2. Empty weight, 8,000 kilograms. Maximum takeoff weight, 16,500 kilograms. Combat range, 1,500 kilometers. Engine, one GE F414 GE 39E producing 57.8 kilonewtons thrust dry or 98 kilonewtons with afterburner. Thrust to weight ratio, 1.04. The Gripen makes use of the internally equipped Mauser BK-27, a 27mm revolver cannon capable of firing 1,700 rounds per minute. For the two-seat version of the Gripen, the cannon is removed to make room for the added pilot. Additionally, the Gripen has 10 hardpoints. The Gripen can carry about 6,500 kilograms of ordnance and equipment. Having been designed as a true multi-role fighter, the Gripen can carry an incredible range of weapons. Some of these include for air-to-air -air missions, heat-seeking AIM-9 Sidewinders, IRSTs, or A darter missiles. For beyond visual range, AIM-120 AMRAMs, MBDA MICAs, or MBDA Meteor missiles. For air-to-ground missions, Mark 82 bombs, BK-90 cluster bombs, GBU SPD-39 small diameter precision bombs, GBU paveway laser guided bombs, and AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles. For anti-shipping operations, the RBS-15 standoff missile. The Gripen offers some attractive options for the RCAF, as the Gripen was designed to operate out of rough airfields and Arctic environments. In keeping with Canada's request for local manufacturing, Saab is promising the formation of the Gripen for Canada team, which consists of GE Aviation, CAE, IMP Aerospace and Defense, and Peraton Canada. Next, we will take a look at the only fifth generation fighter on this list, the F-35. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II is a fifth generation, single engine, single seat, multi-role stealth fighter, which is tasked with performing a variety of missions including strike, air superiority, surveillance, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. Having been called the most lethal, survivable, and connected fighter in the world, the F-35 is intended to operate until 2070. Lockheed Martin is the primary contractor along with principal partners BAE Systems and Northrop Grumman. The F-35 is an international fighter, with partner nations that include Norway, Australia, Denmark, Canada, and the Netherlands. The F-35 is actually a family of aircraft that is produced in three main variants. The CTOL or conventional takeoff and landing F-35A, the Stolvol or short takeoff and vertical landing F-35B, and the CV Cattle Bar or catapult assisted takeoff but arrested recovery F-35C. If selected by Canada, the F-35A variant will be used. 
Let's take a look at some specifications for the F-35A. Length, 15.7 meters. Height, 4.4 meters. Wingspan, 11 meters. Maximum speed, Mach 1.6 at altitude. Empty weight, 13,290 kilograms. Maximum takeoff weight, 31,751 kilograms. Range, 669 nautical miles on internal fuel. Thrust to weight ratio, 0.87 at gross weight or 1.07 at low to weight with 50% internal fuel. Engines, one Pratt & Whitney F-135 PW100 afterburning turbofan, 120 kilonewtons thrust dry, or 190 kilonewtons with afterburner. The F-35A is armed with the internal GAU-22A 25mm 4-barrel rotary cannon with 180 rounds of ammunition. Additionally, the F-35 has four internal stations and two weapons bays which are used to maintain its stealth profile and six external hardpoints, three under each wing that can be used for non-stealth missions. The internal stations can carry up to 2,600 kilograms, while the external stations can hold up to 6,800 kilograms. Total weapons payload capacity is 8,200 kilograms. The F-35 can carry a diverse range of weapons including, for air-to-air -air missions, heat-seeking AIM-9X Sidewinders or the AIM-132 ASRAM. For beyond visual range, AIM-120 AMRAMs or MBDA Meteor Missiles. For air-to-ground missions, the AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon, Paveway Laser Guider Bombs, Mark 20 Rock Eye Cluster Bombs, Mark 77 Incendiary Cluster Bombs, the AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile or the AGM-88 Harm Anti-Radar Missile for suppression of enemy air defenses. For anti-ship operations, the AGM-158C Long Range Anti-Ship Missile or LRASM and hopefully one that never gets used, the B-61 Thermonuclear Gravity Bomb. This list is by no means inclusive as there are currently several future payload options being developed for the F-35. The F-35 certainly has had unprecedented cost overruns and has taken longer to bring into frontline service than anyone ever thought. However, the program did have some lofty goals and set out not only to be the best 5th generation air to everything platform, but also to be made available to allies. As a partner in the program, Canada has a vested interest in acquiring the F-35 as it is already manufacturing parts for the F-35 and is part of the global supply chain for the fighter. And finally, the F-35 is likely to be the most numerous fighter into the near future, making parts and interoperability a strong consideration. One could make the argument that the F-35 is the most future-proofed of the three options for Canada. We've taken a look at the three candidates for the RCAF's replacement for the Legacy Hornet. Now let's take a quick look at the needs of the RCAF. The stated mission of the RCAF is to provide the Canadian forces with relevant, responsive, and effective air power to meet the defense challenges of today and into the future. Traditionally, the RCAF has focused on air intercept missions in order to defend its airspace and provide coverage over the Arctic. To this end, the fighter that is ultimately selected will need to perform air intercept missions where historically, speed and readiness are of the most importance. What do you think? Which of these three fighters is best for Canada and why? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the subscribe button along with the bell for notifications. If you'd like to support this channel, consider Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you enjoy engaging conversations about aviation, military tactics, history, or even video games related to these topics, join our growing community on Discord. We have members from all over the world. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and click the bell for notifications to see more videos like this one. Stay safe and see you next time.